Yo, we're here today, beer fans, with one of my absolute favorites, Yinling Traditional Lager. We'll talk about some of the history of this beer, um, and then we'll talk about its flavor. Now, the first thing you should know about this beer is where I'm at, this beer costs the same amount as Budweiser and Miller, Miller Lite, Miller Genuine Draft, Coors Light. Bud Light, Michelob, all those beers I'm naming off, all those macros. So this is the beer that competes with those at that price range. Now again, notice the kind of the amber color in comparison to the beer we've been talking about, the kind of the adjunct lagers. This has a amber color. I don't know what Yunling does. I'm assuming that's what the uh, malts or um, something that they get this color from. Um, this is technically an adjunct. Um, I believe it uses corn. Um, and so that's like Jadisi, I think, uses corn. And a lot of beer uses corn as an adjunct. I don't know, believe... I could be wrong, but I don't believe there's any rice in this, um, which would be typical of American pre-prohibition lagers, uh, that they wouldn't have had a lot of a rice in it, because I don't think rice was that big yet, and it would have been used as a main adjunct at that time. Um, maybe Budweiser did, I don't know. Let's put that, this is the 16-ounce uh, big can um, it's a very attractive can, modern look. The 12 ounce can is a um, old fashioned looking can. Also very li likable. That's a, that's a good tasting beer. Now if I'm drinking Ginny and Yinling, I think there's a corn flavor that you can pick up in some of these. Um, I don't know, you know, I wish I could say it's a bourbon flavor because bourbon is, of course, corn liquor, but I can't say that. But it's a distinct, you know, kind of flavor that's in both. This has a lot more going on than that, than Genesee does. Um... Along with that corn, kind of dull, kind of corny flavor, is this kind of hop. It's a nice, actually, kind of hop flavor. It's several things that were sure hit, hit you at once with the inlay. And none of them were particularly strong. And none of them overpower any of the other ones. I know them are particularly good, but as a whole experience, as you drink it, it's a very easy to drink, reasonably flavorful, good beer. Not a great beer, not anywhere near a great beer, but for the price, it's a true, it's a winner. It's a real winner at the price point that it that it has. Um, you really can't beat a be this beer. Maybe the American Ale, which I'll review later, is, is better. But this is a good beer. Now, it's also a special beer. Um, the American Brewing was basically destroyed by two separate events. One is widely known. Prohibition. During Prohibition, the little guys got thousands, hundreds may at least, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of breweries basically went over, under. The big breweries were able to make it selling ice cream and soda and low alcohol beer, near beer, so very low. Um, possibly what would be also non-alcoholic, so this was... 
very light stuff. And during Prohibition, people got used to that. And only pe people who survived, that was what they were making. So after Prohibition, that became kind of the dominant style. It was weaker, more watery, we would call it. Although, again, it's not really watered down. Uh, when people say Budweiser's watered down, they really don't know what they're talking about. Um, Budweiser doesn't add water at the end of it. They don't. There's not a strong version of Budweiser at some point in the brewing process that water is added to. They're doing things to dull the flavor. They're using adjuncts. They're using rice and those kind of things to weaken the flavor of the beer flavor, basically. It's not water that's doing it. Um, it's all the other things. And then lesser known is actually World War II. Uh, so a generation had gotten used to what we would call near beer. And then we had the Great Depression. And then uh, the, we go to war. And a generation of men, the army gives them weak, I think Anheuser-Busch beer. Um, at low alcohol levels, again, weak, not very tasty beer. This, of course, that makes sense. The army isn't wanting the soldier to be getting wasted. They just want him to get a little bit of an alcohol flavor and have a treat. So the soldiers get used to this. And there's lots of restrictions on and regulations on who can open breweries and who can brew. And so over time you get this consolidation and Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, and these what we would now call the macros gain dominance. And what wins are light beers and what we call light flavored lagers. These even among the adjuncts. Um, Budweiser triumphs over Slits, which was its main competitor, which is an adjunct, but is a much more flavorful adjunct. The Schlitz Gusto, if I could review it, I'd love to. It's, it's, if I had to say what was the best American adjunct lager, I would say the, of the ones I've had, it would be Schlitz Gusto um, from Paps. So, which that's an interesting story in of itself, which is why I'd love to review that beer. But anyway, Yingling traditional lager is special. They brought it back in the 70s. And from what I've read, this is one of the few examples that exist of what American beer kind of tasted like. At least some American beer tasted like before Prohibition, before World War II, before Prohibition, before basically our taste got dulled. And was only brought back by the two two combinations, which was importing a better tasting beer like Guinness um, and other beers, and also the allowing of home brewing by Jimmy Carter. And so this is kind of represents that style. And some people put Genesee in this, but my understanding is Yunling is for sure the traditional is for sure a. Um, example of pre a pre prohibition beer and when you drink it you think well if there were people doing some variation to this American drink beer probably wasn't that bad higher prohibition we probably had because you know I would imagine some would be better than this my understanding is Miller Coors that Coors has found a um pre-prohibition recipe that they're now brewing as batch 19 but only in limited locations so I've not had that I if Coors is listening which of course they're not um, I strongly urge them to release that I would love to to try it um, but anyway I strongly recommend if you're looking for a good beer not a great beer but a good drinkable Slightly more flavorful beer at the Budweiser Miller Genuine Draft Coors Light price point. Yinling is as bad as good as you can get. Um, strongly recommended for the money. That's all the time we have. See you later.